Middle East, the region is engulfed in flames from uh, Libya to Iraq. Uh, one new formation, jihadi formation after another seems to spring out from nowhere. And the current focus, of course, is on uh, ISIS. Um, what, what can you tell us about ISIS and what, have, what are its origins? Well, actually, there's an interesting article that just appeared a couple of days ago by uh, a highly qualified uh, analyst, Graham Fuller, CIA background, one of the leading uh, intelligence and mainstream analysts of the Middle East. And the title is The United States Created ISIS. Uh, this is one of the conspiracy theories, the thousands of them that go around the Middle East, but this is another source. This is right at the heart of the U.S. establishment. Now, he hastens to point out that he doesn't mean uh, the United States uh, decided to uh, put ISIS into existence and then funded it. His point is, and I think it's accurate, that uh, the United States created the background out of which ISIS grew and developed. Uh, part of it was just the standard sledgehammer approach, smash up what you don't like. Uh, in 2003, uh, the United States and Britain uh, invaded Iraq, major crime. Uh, just this afternoon, uh, the British Parliament uh, uh, granted the government the authority to bomb Iraq again. Uh, the invasion was devastating to Iraq. Iraq had already been virtually destroyed, uh, first of all, by the long, uh, decade-long war with Iran. Uh, in which, incidentally, Iraq was backed by the United States, uh, and uh, then the decade of sanctions, which uh, were described, they were described as genocidal by the international, respected international diplomats who administered them, and both resigned in protest for that reason. They devastated the civilian society. They strengthened the dictator. Uh, compelled the population to rely on him for survival. It's probably the reason he wasn't sent on the path of a whole stream of other dictators who were overthrown. Uh, finally, the US just decided to attack the country, 2003. Uh, the attack, uh, it, it was compared, it's compared by many Iraqis to the Mongol invasions uh, of uh, a thousand years earlier. Uh, very destructive. Uh, not I mean, hundreds of thousands of people killed, uh, millions of refugees, millions of other displaced persons, the destruction of uh, uh, the uh, archaeological richness and wealth of the country back to Samaria. Uh, and one of the effects of the invasion was immediately to institute sectarian divisions. Part of the uh, brilliance of the invasion force, its director, Paul Bremer, was to uh, uh, separate the, sec the sects, you know, Sunni, Shia, Kurds, separate them from one another, uh, uh, set them at each other's throats. Uh, within a couple of years, uh, there was a major sectarian conflict uh, incited by the invasion, uh, very brutal. Uh, you can see it if you say, look at Baghdad. If you take a map of Baghdad, say in 2002, it's a mixed city. Sunni and Shia are living in the same neighborhoods. They're intermarried. Uh, uh, in fact, sometimes they say they didn't even know who was Sunni, who was Shia. It's like knowing whether your friends are in one Protestant group or another Protestant group. There are differences, but it was not a. It was not hostile. In fact, for a couple of years, they were. Uh, both sides were saying there'll never be Sunni Shia conflicts. Were too uh, intermingled and the nature of our lives, uh, where we live, and so on. And by 2006, it was a raging war. Uh, out of that, that uh, conflict then was spread to the whole region. By now, the whole region is being torn apart by Sunni-Shia conflicts. And out of such conflicts, the natural dynamics of them, of a conflict like that, is that the most extreme elements begin to take over. And they had roots. Their roots are in the major US ally, Saudi Arabia. 
That's been the major U.S. ally in the region as long as the U.S. has been seriously involved there. In fact, since the, founda well, since the foundation of the Saudi state, it's kind of a family dictatorship, as you know. Uh, and the reason is it has a huge amount of oil. Uh, Britain, before the United States, had all typically preferred radical Islamism to secular nationalism. And when the U.S. took over, it essentially took the same stand. The radical Islam, which is centered in Saudi Arabia, it's the most extremist uh, radical Islamic state in the world. You know, uh, it makes Iran look like a tolerant modern country by comparison. But uh, 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 and of course the secular parts of the Middle East, the, of the Arab Middle East even more so. Uh, but it was the, uh, and it's not only uh, 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 directed by an extremist uh, version of Islam, the Wahhabi Salafi version, but it's also a missionary state. So it uses its huge resources, oil resources, to uh, promulgate these doctrines throughout the region, establishes schools, mosques, you know, clerics, and so on, all over the place, from Pakistan to Africa, North Africa. And uh, that, uh, an extremist version of Saudi extremism uh, is the doctrine that was picked up by ISIS. So it grew out of, ideologically, the most extremist form of Islam, the Saudi Wahhabi version, and the uh, conflicts that were engendered by the, uh, uh, by the uh, U.S. sledgehammer that smashed up Iraq and has now spread everywhere. Uh, and that's what Fuller means. By, and uh, Saudi Arabia not only uh, uh, provides the ideological core that led to the uh, ISIS radical extremism, but it also funds them not the Saudi government, but wealthy Saudis, wealthy Kuwaitis, uh, and others provide the funding and the uh, ideological support for these uh, jihadi groups that are springing over all, up all over the place. And, uh, there are other. Uh, this uh, attack on the region by the United States and Britain is the source of where this thing originates. And that's what Fuller meant by saying the United States created ISIS. And you can be pretty confident that as conflicts develop, they'll become more, the more extremist, the more brutal, the harshest groups will take over. That's what happens when violence becomes the means of interaction. Uh, it's almost automatic. Uh, it's true in neighborhoods. You know, it's true in international affairs. And the dynamics are perfectly evident. And that's what's happening. That's where ISIS comes from. Uh, if ISIS, if they manage to destroy ISIS, they'll have something more extreme on their hands.